I've had the Sony ZV-1 for about a year now, so I thought it would be a good idea to do a video going over the things I like about it, as well as the things that could be improved. Well firstly, spoiler alert, I enjoy using this camera so much that it's actually become my primary B-roll camera for this channel. But there has been a few times that I've been using this camera and wanted a little bit more out of it and I'll be going over those things in this video. So the first thing that I really love about the Sony ZV-1 is just the size and weight of this thing. It's just such a small camera to carry around with you, yet it always delivers great results. I mentioned already that I use this almost exclusively for all of my b-roll on this channel and why? Because it takes about two seconds to set this thing up and get recording. It's just so convenient and easy to use. I don't need to worry about various different lenses or anything like that, I can just flip out the screen on this thing, it turns on and I can get recording in a matter of seconds. Sometimes I'll even take the ZV-1 with me in my kit bag even when I'm not planning to use it because it takes up such little space and doesn't really add much weight to my kit bag that it's worth just putting in there anyway. And if you're someone looking to grow your YouTube channel, your Instagram account or anything like that, it's great to have a little camera with you just in case you need it. The second thing that I really like about the Sony ZV-1 is the zoom range. So you get a 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent on this camera, which for me is more than enough. Now, when this camera was first released, a lot of people complained that the 24 millimeter wasn't wide enough for people that wanted to record themselves, but I've never had this issue with the camera. I just put it on a little handheld tripod and I always get that extra bit of reach that I need. I don't actually need a wide angle lens for this. The, the ZV-1 is perfect as it is. And in terms of the zoom range, 70 millimeter is more than enough. I know there's some compact cameras that can go to like 200, 500, probably even more, and you get those super zoom cameras, but for me, and using the ZV-1, 70 millimeters is more than enough. Another great feature on the Sony ZV-1 is the minimum focus distance when you're set to 24 millimeters. So at 24 millimeters, the minimum focus distance is five centimeters, which is insanely close. Now for this channel, when I'm doing product reviews and things like that, being able to put a product five centimeters away from the lens is great, especially when you want to show off a particular feature. Now, just as an example, the 24 millimeter that I've got on my Sony a7 III right now to record this video, I think the minimum minimum focus distance is around 20 to 28 centimeters, so that's much further away from the lens. Now I know you can do crop mode on the a7 III so you can get that extra bit of zoom in, but I don't have to worry about doing any of that with the ZV-1, I don't have to fiddle around with settings, I can just put something right next to the lens and start recording. Which again adds to the whole convenience of this camera and being able to just start recording whenever you need to. Now one feature that I simply cannot ignore on the ZV-1 is the autofocus. So my a7 III that I'm recording on right now has great autofocus, it keeps me in focus during these videos, but sometimes it can get a little bit confused and it is a little bit slower than the ZV-1. Now the ZV-1 in comparison is lightning fast and pretty much anything you put in front of the lens it locks onto. Now I know that in 2022, Sony has released some new cameras and they have even better autofocus than both of these cameras. But if you're going from an a7 III or even an older camera and then you get the ZV-1, you are going to notice a huge improvement in the autofocus. So much so that I can just rely on the ZV-1 for pretty much anything. In fact, I can give this to a friend to record some B-roll for me and not worry that they need to fiddle around with focus or anything like that. It's just going to work. And the last positive thing I want to mention about the ZV-1 is the image quality and the video quality, both of which on this camera are outstanding, I think, for the price. I did a video on the ZV-1 doing some street photography last year, and the quality of those photos, they're still some of my favorite street photography photos even now. So even a year later, when I've got a bunch of new lenses for my Sony a7 III, I still think the ZV-1 photos are some of the best. Now that says something about the ZV-1 in my opinion, whether or not you want to use this for photo or video, the ZV-1 is going to deliver. And when it comes to video, you are not going to be disappointed with the quality. So I tend to shoot in 4K on the ZV-1 in hybrid log gamma mode, but you've also got the S-log options as well if you want to film in those color profiles rather than the preset ones built into the camera, which tend to give you a little bit more detail in the highlight and the shadows and you can do more editing in post. But I found the ZV-1 to be more than what I need for things like B-roll, the image quality has always been brilliant, and because of all of the factors I've mentioned so far, so the autofocus, the size of this thing, the image quality, it just makes the ZV-1 such a great camera to have on hand. In fact, I am so confident with the quality that you get from the ZV-1 that I even used it on a professional shoot doing a highlight reel at an event, and the client was more than happy with the final video. But in spite of all of these great features on the ZV-1, there are some drawbacks. So the first is the low light performance. Now I didn't really want to include this as a negative because I don't really think it is one. 
The reason I say that is because when you buy the ZV-1, you understand that you're getting a one inch sensor. You can't change the lenses. You are limited in terms of what the camera can actually produce. It's never going to produce a low light image like a full frame camera or an APS-C camera. So you can't really expect that from the ZV-1. But if you are looking to get this, it's just something to consider. So although it's not really a negative because when you buy the ZV-1, you should know this, it's still something to bear in mind if you're looking to get one that when you do want to film in low light scenarios you're not going to get the best image quality. The second thing that I wasn't too impressed with on the Sony ZV-1 is the built-in ND filters. Now when I bought this camera I thought that this would be a fantastic feature, I could shoot video outside in broad daylight, still use that f1.8 aperture and not worry about the background being overexposed. However when I actually got this camera I realised that the ND filters don't really make much of a difference at all in broad daylight and if you want an image that's properly exposed you are still going to have to ramp up that shutter speed, there is no way you're going to be able to film in broad daylight at say 1 over 50 shutter speed f1.8 and actually have a good image. It's still going to be way overexposed even with that built-in ND filter. Now there are some instances where the ND filter is actually quite useful so if I'm shooting indoors with studio lighting and I'm doing my b-roll then I usually use the ND filter so that I can still shoot you know 1 over 50 at 1.8 aperture otherwise the image does become a little overexposed. So although the ND filter in the ZV-1 isn't totally useless it still isn't as good as what you'd expect and if you are planning to film in broad daylight either ramp up the shutter speed or buy an accessory where you can then put an ND filter on the front of this camera. So the final thing that could be improved on the Sony ZV-1 is the battery life. So when this camera first came out, there were a lot of reviewers that said you could get around an hour out of this. I just have never experienced that since owning this camera. Whether or not I use Sony's own batteries or third party ones, I tend to get around 20 to 30 minutes out of this camera if I'm shooting in 4K. So you may get an hour if you're planning to do photos, but if you're doing video a lot on this camera, you're looking at about 20 to 30 minutes maximum, which means you are going to need spare batteries, but there are a ton of battery kits on Amazon where you can get like three batteries on a charger for like 20 to 30 pounds. And I'll link the kit that I have in the description below. And this has actually reminded me of another positive that I forgot to mention in the previous section, and that's the fact that you can get so many different accessories for the Sony ZV-1. So whether or not that's extra batteries, cages, you can even get, you know, lenses that you can stick onto the front to make the view wider and they also have filter threads on the front as well so you can add ND filters and things like that. There are so many accessories out there for the ZV-1 and I guess because it's just such a popular camera there's a reason for these to exist. So one year later with the ZV-1 and I am super happy with this little camera I honestly think the image quality you get out of this is just fantastic for the price and what else would I want from this? Quite honestly, it's given me everything that I need out of a camera of this size, and especially at this price point. Most people that see the footage from this are always quite surprised. They're kind of like, wow, you got that image quality out of this tiny little camera? And it's like, yeah, it's, it's so worth buying. So that's it for my one year later opinions on the Sony ZV-1. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It really helps out this channel. If you want to see more from me, subscribe. Hit that little bell icon as well that comes up afterwards and you'll be notified when I upload another video. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.